Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad, and today I'm very honoured to speak with none other than Freya Run. Freya is the Global Communications Director of a very exciting blockchain project called BitGame. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Freya. Thank you, thank you too. Thank you, it is my pleasure to talk with you for um, in, in Skype, and uh, I'm really happy to talk with you. Likewise. And hello, Eric. Hello, everyone. I'm thank Freya you. of BitGame. Thank you, Freya, for acknowledging the community because they are the most important people, I suppose, in every blockchain startup. We are excited <laughs> to hear about you, though, and thank you for your time once again. So, Freya, obviously you are leading the way in terms of the global direction of this company, so that's a pretty important role. Can you tell us a bit about your, your background uh, with regard to you know, why you are well, you know, well experienced for this role? Yeah, sure. So uh, right now I'm the Global Community Director in BGAME. I took charge of the community construction, about the promotion and public relations, and also overseas marketing as well. So I help with the team to you know get attract more players, more more users to our project, and uh, this is what I do. I come to this blockchain um, industry not in a quite long time. Before mm -hmm. that, I was the global development manager in Chita, Chita Mobile. Maybe you have okay. heard it. Maybe. It's a very famous yeah, application company and also advertising company. And um, I, when I was in Chita, when I witnessed a lot of game pu uh, publishers and uh, developers who spend a lot of money to promote their applications, to promote their games, mm -hmm. to get more traffic. And uh, what they earn is not that much. They spend a lot of them on the advertising part. So mm. that's why I began to think, so what's the future of the game industry? Should I keep investing more and more money on mm -hmm. advertising or there's another break point for them? So that's why I, I heard about a blockchain and I heard about a big game project. I it's see. very interesting and um, I would like to join immediately. So that's why I was here. I see. I'm here so so you, yeah. genuinely had a, you genuinely had a passion and interest in blockchain and also in the gaming industry and what the, both the synergy could, be, uh, could afford in terms of what is potentiated through this uh, connection. So let's explore that in terms of BitGain itself. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about the, the problems, perhaps, that you foresaw, given that you know the marketplace so well and you're well experienced uh -huh. in this, uh, uh, I guess, this scene of, of understanding gaming? Why, mm -hmm. why is blockchain something that is uh, so uh, able to redress a, this problem and what is this problem? Okay, so in my opinion, there must be a break, break point appearing out for traditional game industry. This is the present situation and tendency. I know you guys must ask why. Because if you pay attention on the financial report for quarter four of all those super game companies in China, such as Tencent and NetEase, you certainly find that their game revenue is decreasing comparing with the data last season or even last year. So okay. I think this sign of decreasing is not simply lying on only Tencent or NetEase. Actually, this is a symbol showing the common problem facing by the whole game industry that there is a um, desperate need and a demand for game industry to innovate, to evolve, to revolutionize, and to inject more blood, more new blood into this whole industry. And this is why mm -hmm. Big Game builds our whole project. I see. Well, you're talking about some big names there, Frey. You're talking about Tencent, one of the largest companies, yeah. if not the largest right. in its industry in the world. Um, and clearly, yeah. you're suggesting that there is a reduction in this revenue. So. No doubt, BitGame wants to take some of that stake, you know, into the right. in, in the decentralized sense. Uh, so you must be right. excited that you are one of the first movers to do this in China. Yeah, actually, we are the first digital asset exchange for blockchain games all around the world. I mean, no one is doing the same things, the same project with us. So yeah, I think we certainly have the advantage to build all this project. Absolutely. I mean, if you're the first in the world of anything, that must be pretty exciting to be part of. But let's talk about it, BitGain itself as well, Freya. For those perhaps who've never heard of it, and I imagine there are many in the world, can you tell us in right. a, more, a more simplistic sense what it is and why uh -huh. it's important? 
Yeah, okay, sure. So as we have listed out information uh, in our white paper as well, basically our whole project contains four parts. So one is big game exchange. Big game exchange is the world's first digital asset exchange for blockchain games, and it will not only grow together with other members, but also share benefits mm -hmm. through our POC mining pool and uh, double double repurchase program with global game players as well as exchange users. So this is the exchange. And the other one is Big Game Solution. It provides an original and a complete set of development keys as API or SDK for traditional game publishers based upon your um, Ethereum, HN, Trust Node, Game Chain System, and Matrix AI network, etc. I think. And, uh, yeah, also we provide a big game platform. It's based on Decos, as mm -hmm. you might have heard of it, and it offers technical support, incubation funds, and asset trading for all the innovative, high potential blockchain game projects. And the last is IDEX, A I D E X. Mm -hmm. It's a decentralized exchange based on AI technology, artificial intelligence, and uh, um, jointly with the famous company Matrix AI Network, because mm -hmm. they're so experienced in the development of AI technology. So, it will continue to optimize the user experience on the basis of transparency, such as high transaction rate, lower transaction cost, sufficient transaction depth, and flexibility, etc. Uh, et I see. Yeah, so this and, is what we do. And Freya, thank you for being so prepared. Obviously, you've made some important <laughs> notes, which we appreciate given that you, you know, context being in China. Now, if we could mm -hmm. just refer, you know, recap those. You mentioned that there's a mining element. You mentioned there's a platform. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the IDEX and, and Matrix. Right. That connection right. with Matrix can't be understated because clearly Matrix is doing extremely well in the AI space in China right, right. now, and the team is exceptional. So what's your sentiment with regard to having that, that direct connection with Matrix? How do you feel about oh, having that? Actually, Matrix is our, like the main strategy partner is our VIP strategy, uh, strategy partner. We have several strategy partners who are uh, public blockchain companies and uh, who has supported us with their great help and uh, their super support. And um, we actually cooperated with Matrix in several aspects. Mm -hmm. um, first is the integrated wallet which will develop uh, develop with them together and also the edX as I mentioned earlier and mm -hmm. also a decentralized data and accountant improvement this is also something that we will do together with matrix I see. and also we have their CEO Owen Tao and their professor Steve Dung and Bill Lee they're also our advisors mm -hmm. so you can see you know we really got solid backup from mm -hmm the Matrix AI network and and I really appreciate their you know their their support. For and they us. and they clearly believe in you because they could no doubt pick any company they wanted to to support. <laughs> so they would have been quite selective I, I imagine because I know I went personally and I can tell you that he is such an academic, oh. he would have covered this very thoroughly in his assessment, I would imagine, and done his due diligence and he has chosen you. So well done to achieve such high high ranking advisors. We will obviously explore this further though. With regard to your tech as well, um, if you could tell us a bit more about your fundamentals, what is your core technology really about and what sets you apart? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I think because uh, I'm the global community director, I may not know much about the technical things, so maybe for the video too, I can ask my te uh, technical leader to take this video, but for me, I would like to explain a little bit on why we are better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So this is also a question that we've also given a lot of thought on that. Mm -hmm. But before any kind of explanation, I'd like to take an example of earlier games. Mm -hmm. So just look back to the whole game industry nowadays, we're quite fami familiar with Apple Store games and Google Play games. We download them in our mobile phones and play them. But before free games showing up it was games that pay to play right. the players must spend some money first to buy the games before they could play them right. so free to play games once has cut down the barrier for the whole game industry to attract more players come and play and now people just get used to play other free games 
they quite know a lot about uh, playing uh, the pain points in the games, and they know that once they spend money on games, the money is kind of like a loss because if they stop playing, the money is just gone for good. I see. So, for blockchain games, is play to earn. Actually, it helps lower the barrier even much more for game players as they could earn by playing games. So if you know that you could earn some money when you're playing it, why not? So as long as there are game players all around the world, there is the, the certain value of our tokens and exchange. So our big game API could offer risk control and asset issuing support for all the game projects. We are in a much more close relationship with all the blockchain games because we're the only and the world's first digital asset exchange for blockchain games. We are strongly and closely linked with the game projects rather than any other exchanges. I so see. This is, yeah. and, and what's exciting is that, you know, I want to stress as much as possible that you are this digital asset exchange. You're not just simply a, yeah. a company trying to house and support games themselves. And one of the things yeah. I want to re reinforce that I think is really valuable that you mentioned was that you're moving away from this free-to-play model to more using your APIs to do something that's play to earn, something that I haven't actually heard of before. And that model is pretty clever because that, that suits blockchain perfectly because you're incentivizing yeah. people to you know, enter into the decentralized gaming industry, right. which hasn't been possible right. before blockchain. Right, certainly, because we've also taken 30% of our total tokens into the POC mining pool. So when people play other blockchain games released on our big game platform, they could also mine the tokens when playing the games. Mm. So more tokens will be earned by them. So I this see. is why players would like to play our games. And once again, that also explains, Freya, why you would opt for the technology of blockchain, because you could have chosen any blockchain, sorry, rather, you could, cho could have chosen any technology. And really, blockchain is just one option, and you've used this to your benefit to really reach out to as much pe many people around the world as possible, uh, and uh, in a sense, reinvigor and reinvigorate rather the blockchain uh, sorry the gaming industry so if we could now talk about blockchain a little bit further with regard to your position um, my understanding is that you are agnostic by design in that you could essentially um, you be you be functional on any number of blockchains but you're starting with matrix yeah we start with matrix as well as some other famous public blockchain companies uh, besides Matrix, we also got Elastos. It's another very famous name, as you might already heard of yes, it. Yes, I definitely have. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Rong Chen and Feng Han are also our advisors. We got their support as well. Mm -hmm. So see, they all trust us. They all have faith in our project. And that's why we had the faith to build it in a, per in a perfect way. And also, we will cooperate with Elastos in several aspects. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, they have their reputation already, and uh, we'll cooperate with them in-depth strategy cooperation, such as Java EVM technology, right. or we also will transplant games into Elastos platform, and uh, including, we also do some co-branding promotion with them. So you can also find our you know, CEO, Kevin, who has mm -hmm. given a speech during their um, Elastos meetup. That's we uh, that's we've been invited by them, and our CEO given the uh, have had given a speech. Wow! So, so Freya, obviously that's a really exciting uh, and big deal because Ron Chen is not only the lead architect for Elastos, but he spent 17 to 18 years building this technology. He has right. worked for 10 years alongside Bill Gates for Microsoft. There are very few, if not. I would say one of maybe three or four in the world that are doing what he's doing. And you partnered yeah. with this company. And not only that, Elastis have already done other things like brought in Zapier, which, which they're very much focused on video technology. They want to mm -hmm. build out those assets. So they've regarded you, no doubt, as another asset to build out mm -hmm. their plan. It must mm -hmm. be exciting to have these kind of high level advisors. You don't have advisors that people don't know. You have ones that are well known. Right, and also, as, uh, as you may know, that we also uh, got the solid backup from Neo.game, is the blockchain game portal of Neo ecosystem. So, yeah, Neo, the Neo, as you know, we would build the game ecosystem with them all together. I so, see. Yeah. So, yeah, even, besides e even more, 
I mean, Neo is one of the most right. reputable. Right, even more because yeah, we have plenty of you know public blockchain uh, partners such as uh, besides all those three, we also got A Chain Trust Node and uh, Selling and the Game Chain System, mm -hmm. as well as other. Yeah, companies. So right. that's why we had a phase to do this project. And, and A-Chain also, once again, is another reputable platform and has <laughs> and already has quite a number of uh, businesses appending to that their, their platform right. as well. So they are well right. positioned in China, perhaps not so well known outside of China yet, but that will no yeah. doubt follow. But what is really clear is that they must see the value in the gaming platform that you are and right, more importantly, right. the exchange capacity right now, because there's only a certain number of, of, of businesses that really suit the blockchain currently, and they must right. be regarding you seriously to do that. So let's explore perhaps the, the team itself a little bit more in terms of your core team members. We've discussed some of those lead advisors, but why is your team, or, or is your team so good? And can you tell us more about them? Sure. Uh, first is our CEO is Eric Sun. Is uh, he is a game developer? Is a very experienced game developer who has developed several popular games, and uh, he's also a former CEO of Pomjoy. He has worked at Perfect World and the French Telecom. He's expert in blockchain, and uh, he's also a consultant of Bitcoin IFO. And uh, also our CF uh, COO is Kelvin Kevin Wong. He's the former CEO of Big Chess AI, and he's very experienced game publisher. He's as he's an expert in game operation and asset trading. And also we got Mr. Kinnis. He's former manager of Huobi. Has you've also heard the name? Yes. And he has worked as VP for three years in BSB Bank. He has very rich experience in risk control and auditing. He's the one who works for our exchange safety. And also we got Mr. Shen, he's also our co-founder. He's a very successful entrepreneur. He has 15 years of senior management experience in communication and media companies. So this is our co-founders all together. And um, that's why we believe we, our project is going to be a success because they are experienced in mm -hmm. both in game industry and as well as in blockchain industry. I see. So that, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to allude to that in that you need to have obviously a skill set built into the team that isn't just about the gaming. And one thing I did right. want to ask you as well is that are you confident that you've covered the other aspect and that is business and enterprise uh, savvy? Do you think that your team have that skill set down pat to build out your plan? Certainly, we we got um, tech, we got uh, technical departments as well. Our tech leader is very, you know, he's very smart. And uh, also, uh, next time, and next time, I think I'm gonna ask him to give this video to, Absolutely. you know, explain some more technology aspect of our project. Because sure. he knows much more about our project than I do. Sure, and clearly the technology is covered, and, but it was more about the business as well. You must be confident that these teams collectively can lead out the business model so that you know, that's taken seriously in the context of what you essentially are, which is a business startup. Um, if, we could right. now, if we could now talk about the marketplace itself. You, oh, are, you okay. are obviously an expert, I guess, in the gaming industry having been in this role. <laughs> well, hopefully you'd know the marketplace. So can you tell us a bit more about the numbers in terms of just how big is this, this space you're entering? And in terms of revenue, in terms of economy, uh, how profitable can it be? You know, I once saw a report saying that there are all around the world about 2.2 billion players globally. And according to the New Zealand state statistics, the global revenue from direct games in 2017 has reached $110 billion, if including derivative revenue of games, it reaches $200 billion globally. So with this huge number, you may have an impression of how big a home game market it is, right. I think. Right, and so really we're looking at the tip of the iceberg potentially for having a, a slice of the pie, the revenue pie for uh, <laughs> sort of the, rev the decentralized right. marketplace yeah. of gaming and particularly in the exchange context. Um, but let's now talk about the really challenging uh, issue of competition, Freya, because we can't deny that there are other companies, even in the blockchain domain, that are doing this kind of thing. Right. So can we just right. really unpack this and, and get real? Are the competitors a concern to you? Who are the competitors? And why are you better than them? 
Okay, so for me, I actually I don't heard any name that they're doing the same things with us because mm -hmm. I don't think there's anyone who is doing the same project because our project is very big and it's huge and uh, it's quite a grand plan already. So actually, we are also an open platform. We would like to establish the cooperation partnership with uh, the companies and we our vision is to establish this blockchain game ecosystem mm -hmm. and to make it better. So actually, even if we got competitors in the future or recently, it's not a bad thing for us because the market is really big and it's big enough for anyone or for everyone who can do the blockchain game business in this mm -hmm. market. So. We welcome all of them and we'll, we would like to cooperate with them. We would like to grow this business together with them and to build this ecosystem with them together to make right. it better. Okay, so just to clarify with you so the audience understands, you're arguing that there's nothing really that, that is comparable to you right now in sense that of, of a digital assets exchange for gaming. Right. So are you also suggesting that those who are geared for gaming um, I refer to one, for example, like Engine. They are, have a speci special, you know, focus on gaming itself, but they are distinct and not in, in direct uh, sort of competition with you. Is that right? Um, I think for other game companies, we could always cooperate it with them. So right. we can provide our exchange. So if they are a blockchain game uh, companies already, we could offer our big game exchange for them without any listing token fees. And if they are traditional game companies, we could certainly provide our big game solution for them. So mm. you see, from any way that we can always cooperate I with see. them. Well, Freya, in that context, I want to just throw a bit of a curveball and ask you this. Given that there must be a multitude of centralized uh, gaming companies in China, for example, and even some mm -hmm. of these decentralized ones I'm mentioning. Are you getting phone calls? Are you getting interest from these, you know, these these industries, or rather from these uh, businesses and these um, essentially companies to say, look, we'd like to onboard onto your platform, onto your uh, digital assets exchange? Yeah, actually, we welcome all the cooperation. We all welcome all the partners. Once they have any intention or they have any ideas about their game project, they can always find out and, and mm. talk with us. We welcome all the opportunities to mm. make this better. And is that happening? Yeah. Is that happening though? Are you getting? Yeah, it's definitely exactly right now. Actually, we do have a number of you know game publishers that are cooperating with us mm -hmm. right now for their blockchain games, such as fishchain.io, also poker.io, if I not remember it in the wrong way. So I think we will also release um, most information of all the blockchain game, uh, all the blockchain games that developed mm. from uh, by us in our big game platform as well. By this month, hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll release some information in our official website. So okay. please keep an eye on our official website and sure. you will find other game projects ongoing. Well, well that's yeah. exciting because we will talk about more of your roadmap later. But now let's talk about yeah. the money side, Freya, because everyone does want to know about the tokenomics. So let's just get with the facts yeah. of this. In terms of your hard uh -huh. cap, your private sale, pre-sale, main sale, let's talk about mm -hmm. where you're at. My understanding is you're currently in your main sale. So talk us through. Right. It starts from May 8th and it will end on June 8th, I right. think. Okay. So you're in your main sale. You've already completed your private and, and your pre. Let's talk about the hard cap overall. How much money are you mm -hmm. actually trying to raise? Well, the hard cap is about um, 30,000 ETH and the soft cap is about 5,000 ETH. Okay. So that's, you know, that, that is what it is. That's your soft cap. And yep. obviously you must be optimistic that you're going to achieve uh, and successfully complete this main sale. Um, yep. The BGX is your token. Can you tell us a bit more about the mm -hmm. distribution of it in terms of allocating it to your team and how, how much mm -hmm. is actually in the main sale as part of this whole distribution model? Uh, sure. For the distribution, we also offer the locking plan for mm -hmm. um, other team members as well as all the other members, other supporters who have contributed for us. Mm -hmm. For team members, you could also find uh, the detailed information in our white paper as well. Mm -hmm. We provide different locking plans based on different locking period 
for each team member. And also for other investors who have invested for us before, the, before our ICL, their tokens will also be locking up for six months. And for normal members who have supported us, we provide three kinds of locking up plans. Mm -hmm. So um, the more details will be released on our um, official website later, but I could tell you earlier that all these, um, all these, all these three kind of locking up plans mm -hmm. are very, uh, we could offer, also offer the bonus for all these locking plans. Right. So if such as if they hold our BGS token without any, you know, conducting any transactions, they will get at least 5% of the annual revenue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, so we have three kinds of I see. Plans. So what, what I'm interested in, interested, uh, what I like hearing about is that you have designed a lockup system in that right. you, so the, those who are part of the team can't simply just cash out upon release and exchange and then you know, reap the benefits. We'd like to hear that the, the interests of the people who are those utilizing the service and, and actualizing the mm -hmm. utility can ensure mm -hmm. that it is a, a proper utility. So in that context, do you regard your token as a utility token? Um, yes, I regard it as, uh, as our token as a uh, utility token. Yeah. Right, okay. So obviously it has the purpose specifically geared for a transactional value. Now, if we mm -hmm. could ex explore a bit more of your roadmap, Freya, with regard mm -hmm. to some of the key points for this year coming up, if you could tell us some sure. of them. Sure. Yeah, I, I also, you can also check other details in our official website, but I can, you know, uh, pinpoint some, you know, main roadmaps, you know, uh, main projects that be released in our roadmap that we will um, open source of our POC mining system by June, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll also release our solution, um, the, first wor the first version of our big game solution by this month. So basically these are two um, main projects for us that will be released soon. I see, so that's, quite, that's really soon if you're talking about the release within the end of this month. Uh, right, we'll release the solution, the first version of the, our solution by this month. Okay, and that obviously sits well with your main sale. And I did forget to ask you those dates. How long does your main sale actually run for Freya? Um, our main sale will last for months. It starts May 8th mm -hmm. and it will end on June 8th. I see. So that, again, uh, we can expect some of this, these developments in the roadmap to happen during that main sale period. Um, right. And also with regard to your vision. Um, if you could tell us, you know, sincerely, what is it, what is, what do you see happening in the next year or so, or even two, for your company of BitGame, and um, could you qualify that with some information as to why you think that? So, um, as we've already got solid backup and uh, great support from plenty of famous public blockchain companies, we have pretty much faith on blockchain games. And because uh, we believe that they're gonna surpass traditional web games and mobile games, if for it possesses numerous treasure, just like a storehouse, just like the famous cartoon One Piece has mentioned that oh, it's gonna be Japanese because I can speak a little. The 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 line is that wakwaku suna sugiwa dona bokina matinda na to Luffy wa imasta. It means that um, we're really looking forward uh, to all the challenges that will be coming um, upwards and uh, we'll also get fully prepared for that. So it has sailed along this grand line and go for it. So for, mm. for this is the brand new future for blockchain game world. I see. Well, it's interesting. I could understand what you were saying. So I would say, oh. <laughs> I would say in response back to that, Subarashi des ne yokudekita. Well done. You spoke <laughs> Japanese very well. So tell us a bit Thank more you. about your final statement in terms of you know your community, the community itself, and why you're excited really about the future. Right. We're really about the future as well because we had a phase we could be successful for our project. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Freya, on behalf of all the people who've wanted to know more about BitGame, you have provided that today. Thank you. We will Thank hopefully you. Con uh, you know, remain friends and I'll try and update the, the people about BitGame in the future with more updates and information. But for now, thank you for informing us about your digital uh, asset exchange. 
that is that you're trying to bring all the games together on the blockchain. We wish you all the very best. You. You've articulated that you have these connections with the Lastus and with Matrix. Mm -hmm. They are by no means small players in the blockchain domain. And we look right. forward to also right. seeing those connections unfold as well. So once again, we wish you all the very best as you, you know, finalize you. your main sale. Thank you. Thank you so much for your great help for us as well. And thank you for supporting our project. You are a very kind person and I really like to cooperate with you again. No yeah. problem. Uh, you've you. heard it from Freya Run, the community director. Thank you once again. It's right. a bit game watching out in the blockchain domain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>